I have two criminal charges against me. Uh, the second one is up to 10 years in jail. So the moment I cross the border, they will arrest me. Uh, the problem is that um, the current uh, Russia means that uh, everyone can get uh, in prison, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and um, I, I wasn't there for different reasons. I was there for four times, but for only one reason, for a tweet. Because I tweeted uh, and um, uh, I called for people to gather on the streets and to protest. Mm -hmm. So only for uh, calling for a protest, I was uh, put inside... Um, inside a prison, inside a detention center for several terms. Uh, and uh, I mean, it was when I first uh, found myself there, it was 2018. Uh, now it is 2022. And I mean, the reality is totally different. Almost, uh, I mean, I don't have any friends who haven't uh, been in prison. Everyone was in prison uh, for uh, some political activity or for some, well, usually for some political activity. And so, I mean, uh, now uh, I think this uh, prison cell uh, in Russia is like a model of Russia in general, like a tiny scale, but of the whole country. And you can meet there people of different social layers, uh, different backgrounds, different education. Um, it's like exactly like a tiny, tiny model. Uh, of the whole society. Uh, so it was um, an idea when I started to write it, but I, back then, I didn't realize <laughs> how, uh, well, uh, how it's going to go. Yes, how yeah. it's going to go, what scale it uh, might take. Uh, but so this was the idea to recreate the whole country inside one uh, tiny prison cell. Of course, not all uh, Russians support Putin, and um, uh, you just don't uh, you don't need to believe um, polls or surveys uh, that are conducting in uh, being conducted in Russia because uh, well, it is impossible to uh, to do uh, an actual poll in a authoritarian regime. Uh, everyone is afraid to answer what they uh, think, really. Uh, so I mean, this uh, huge support is nothing but just figures on a paper. Uh, but I was trying to create not some kind of like uh, very oppositional Russia or something like that, just a very controversial one uh, with different people and different ideas. Uh, the way uh, I see my country, a lot of Russians are victims of state propaganda and things like, like that. But I mean, it's very difficult to argue with prices in supermarkets and with uh, uh, I don't know, salaries, uh, which are extremely low in Russia. Uh, so, of course, um, uh, people, I mean, p politics in Russia uh, touches everyone. Uh, you, you can try to avoid it, but it's only um, very, well, it's not very permanent measure. Uh, there will be a day where, well, I don't know, they will just raid your home uh, or uh, you will be fired for some... Uh, uh, anti-governmental slogan, I don't know. So, I mean, um, this is the problem and, well, this is a problem of all authoritarian regimes and this is what Russia is uh, going through right now. Of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be able to do what I do if I didn't believe. Uh, of course I do and uh, I can see, uh, well, Russia is a European country. Uh, it doesn't have its, like, own way, own path, or something like that. It is like a normal democratic country. It should be a normal democratic country, and it definitely uh, will be. Uh, but uh, of course, now it is uh, ruled by uh, corrupt guys uh, who just robbed everyone uh, inside the country and now uh, started uh, a war inside Europe, uh, which is insane. But um, the people are the same as uh, everywhere else and actually everyone wants to live peacefully and uh, uh, prosper, like, to prosper. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, of course, uh, eventually uh, Russia will be a democratic uh, country. Uh, and uh, my whole job is to bring this moment closer. So this is what I do.
Putin is, uh, has been in power for 23 years. Um, there is a whole generation of Russians who has never had a choice. Uh, I mean, they were, uh, there were no one on a ballot to vote for. Uh, so the main thing is to give people opportunity to choose. And they will definitely, if, if they have different options, mm -hmm. they will definitely uh, choose an option that uh, uh, promises them some kind of uh, peaceful, normal life, or, like with high salaries, with uh, uh, normal uh, level of living and so on. Um, so I am completely sure that uh, the changing of power in Russia is the crucial uh, thing for the whole future of my country. Um, so, of course, I think that uh, if Putin is removed and if he is replaced with someone uh, who uh, thinks not about his personal enrichment, but um, about uh, like something good for the whole country, um, it will change like immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, yes, I'm completely sure. Well, it was, um, I, uh, I was 20 years old and uh, it was my uh, first elections and I voted uh, and then I realized that my vote was stolen and it was such a huge revelation. I mean, it was, I, I, I tried to make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I went there because I wasn't, as I told you, very political, um, uh, well, I wasn't very much interested in politics and, and I made an effort, I tried to change something and they just ignored me uh, more, they even they, they stole my, my voice. It was so uh, infuriating uh, that I went to this rally and um, that rally in 2011, the first one, it was huge, like, like I don't know, 50 uh, thousand people. Uh, well, it was Mm, something that I have never experienced before. Uh, a huge crowd united uh, with one single idea and it was so nice uh, to see all these friendly faces, people whom I didn't know but uh, who were so supportive uh, and friendly and as I told. Uh, so, uh, well, this was, this was why I mm -hmm. attended the next one, the next one and then I just, well, I couldn't, and then I saw the, the whole injustice and I was uh, unable to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The main thing that Europeans should understand is that Putin is uh, um, unnegotiable. I mean, you can't negotiate with him. Uh, he uh, thinks that um, words, like, uh, is weakness. Uh, he doesn't, uh, he, he believes only in strength, in force. Uh, and so people who are trying to uh, make deals with him, uh, they will lose because, they, because he will lie to them, he will deceive them uh, eventually, uh, all the time. Uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, right now he is, uh, uh, well, he is uh, conducting a war uh, in Ukraine and um, the only way to stop him is to um, bring on personal sanctions against uh, his officials and his oligarchs, uh, some people who support him, so they, well, it will create some pressure on him and uh, it might uh, lead him to reconsider his uh, decisions. Uh, but the main thing is uh, that um, not uh, the whole Russian nation is uh, to answer for it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are like people uh, who are guilty, they have <laughs> names and you have to target them, mm -hmm. not the whole population. Uh, so this was, this is probably the main thing I would like to, uh, I would like the West to understand. I think that they are senseless. Uh, they wouldn't stop the war, definitely not. But they will help Putin and his propaganda machine to create um, an image of a hostile West, uh, which is fighting the whole Russians, so that the Russians man must unite mm -hmm. and fight back. Mm -hmm. It won't um, stop the war. Uh, again, uh, targeting uh, exact personalities, um, people who support Putin, who um, who are like warm wongers? Uh, this what uh, can make a difference. Well, 
well, I uh, came to work for Alexei Navalny uh, eight years ago, and back then probably it was more of a job for me. I mean, it was um, uh, totally uh, coordinated with my background, with my education. I am a PR specialist and now I work as a press aide, so it was like perfectly uh, perfect career plan yeah. <laughs> um, and, if, and of course of course it was like a moral duty and I, I was proud of my uh, work but it was more like a job with an office uh, like well uh, everything was quite ordinary mm -hmm. but now it's uh, like um, uh, my like life deal I can't see how I can quit for I don't know uh, a higher salary for example I mean, it's like uh, what I uh, should do. It's my life. It does not just work for me anymore. Yes, but it is very difficult to call this uh, a contact. <laughs> well, he is in a high security prison um, in a region next to Moscow. Uh, he, it is very difficult to access him there. I mean, even lawyers have difficulties to access him there. And so, uh, yes, they can see him uh, from time to time. They can uh, pass uh, letters to him and he can read them. But um, it is very uh, not like a proper way of communicating with your lawyer because there is a guard standing next to your shoulder. There is a CCTV camera uh, on the ceiling. So, I mean, uh, everything you say or write uh, is being recorded. Uh, but he still tries to... Mm -hmm pass his ideas uh, to us and uh, uh, he is uh, like watching what we are doing um, and uh, tries to do uh, what he can as much as he can. Uh, right now um, Alexei uh, is in a punishment cell inside this prison which is actually a prison inside a prison. Uh, it is definitely Putin's decision uh, and he's trying to isolate him as much as possible because well, he, once he tried to kill him, he uh, luckily didn't manage to and now he's just trying to uh, prevent uh, Alexei from doing his job, uh, from um, being vocal uh, as much as he can. So, well, uh, it's very difficult uh, to communicate with him right now, but we try. But how is he? I mean... Um, he is in a very good spirits. Uh, he is always very optimistic and um, very well. He is very strong and brave man. Uh, but uh, his conditions there are uh, unbearable, actually, and um, his health uh, is not uh, that good uh, because of this um, constant um, punishments uh, of because of this punishment cell. It is like it is a tiny cell. Uh, without a window there and you don't have a place to lie uh, only to sit or to stand um, you can lie only during night time uh, you don't, don't have an ordinary bed there uh, so it is well the conditions are quite severe and uh, he has problems uh, some kind of problems with his health but uh, I mean uh, morally he, he is um, very optimistic um, as he was before. I just don't think about dangerous. I mean, you can't currently live in a shadow of uh, this fear uh, that something might happen to you. Uh, I mean, come what may, uh, I just ignore all the risks. I mean, I am not a naive person. I realize that there are a lot of risks. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I saw my boss dying from Novichok. Uh, I, I saw a lot. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you just can't... Uh, you can't let them ruin your life uh, with threatening you. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it is not... I don't believe in destiny, like... Uh, in the mystical part of uh, this word, but uh, um, I do what I believe in. Um, Alexei is doing what he, is be he believes in and all my uh, colleagues do. So this is what... Uh, this is my uh, main ambition uh, to make my country free. Uh, and, well, I just try everything and as much as I can to, to do it and uh, uh, I don't think about 
dangerous that uh, comes with it. I mean, I just I am just fo focusing on my uh, work and um, uh, on an effort and not uh, about uh, risks. Before I left Russia, I spent seven months under house arrest. Uh, and uh, in Russia, it means that, uh, I mean, the terms uh, of this house arrest um, are that you are banned from uh, leaving your apartment, from seeing anyone. Uh, I mean, no one can visit you except you for your lawyer. You can't go outside, you can't use internet and you can't use phone. Uh, so you are just totally alone if you live alone. And I lived alone uh, for seven months. Uh, and you are unable to work because you don't have an internet. Uh, well, I was very much detached from Russian reality back then. And it was unbearable uh, because I want to be useful. Uh, and <laughs> I was <laughs> totally useless uh, because I, there was nothing I can do. And I um, found out about the news like several days after they occurred. Uh, it was, well, it was not very uh, nice time. Uh, so now I don't see uh, my current life as an exile or something like that. It's like uh, a dot on a map where I sit with my laptop and I can be attached again to Russian reality uh, much more than I was before. So I just work. I mean, for my job, I need only a laptop and internet and that's it. Uh, and so now I can uh, feel uh, myself um, very much um, like in Ru much more in Russia than I was before when I was actually inside it, but I was uh, banned from all means of communication. Yeah. I have two criminal charges against me. Uh, the second one is up to 10 years in jail. So the moment I cross the border, they will arrest me uh, for? Uh, for, well, for um, uh, telling fake news about the war. Actually, we are doing YouTube uh, videos and YouTube broadcasts um, every day uh, and where we share uh, the news about the war with um, the Russian population because YouTube isn't banned in Russia. Uh, all other social networks are. Uh, so, um, uh, and so for my um, statements that I did during some of these um, broadcasts, uh, they um, fabricated this whole criminal case uh, against me and my colleagues. Um, so up to 10 years for fake news about, uh, well, not war, special operation. Of course. Yes. yes. Uh, so and this is my uh, like second charge. And my first charge is uh, again um, uh, protesting, uh, calling for people to protest um, during uh, coronavirus. Now it, um, well, it is uh, such a um, hypocrisy because um, when uh, it was after we uh, returned from Germany, me and Alexei, and he was arrested. And I um, uh, tweeted about uh, protesting for his uh, release. Uh, and um, I was immediately put under house arrest um, for this uh, violating uh, COVID rules, they, uh, they said. Um, but the hypocrisy is that, I mean, uh, bars and concert halls and restaurants in um, Russia were open and everyone were partying. And uh, I was um, uh, calling for people together on the street. But, well, <laughs> uh, it is a criminal charge in Russia to uh, violate uh, coronavirus rules. And so uh, this is my like first uh, criminal case. Uh -huh. So actually it was when, when you both returned from yes. Germany. Yes. They took him for whatever all these things. Uh, they, they took him. I spent four days uh, free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and um, well, the moment I uh, was traveling back to Moscow, uh, if someone told me that I would be um, arrested, I would like uh, thought that this guy is insane. Why? I mean, I'm, uh, I'm even not a politician. I am just a press aide, I thought. Uh, but no, I mean, um, uh, to Kremlin, it doesn't make any difference. But I'm proud of it. I tend to uh, see all pressure that is uh, being put uh, on me as like um, an award, uh, like um, a recognition of my job. <laughs> so.
Uh, well, there were three reprints of this book in Russia because two first two were just uh, sold out immediately. Uh, so yes, um, there was a very good reception. Uh, I mean, from from the audience, but not from the state, because my book was immediately uh, being checked. They were trying to find uh, a propaganda of LGBT, suicide, and drugs. Uh, because uh, propaganda of LGBT in Russia is again a criminal offense. <laughs> so they were trying to ban my book uh, on those grounds. Uh, but, uh, well, nothing happened. So oh, it is still, uh, you can still buy it in Russia yeah. right now. Thank you so much for your time. I Thank wish you. you all the best. Thank you so much.